Question 32. 6p over 5q plus 4r over 3s is equal to, right, this is a fraction. You have 6p divided by 5q plus 4r over 3s. Now, if you should find the LCM of 5q and 3s, it would be, well, one way to find a, multi, a common multiple is to multiply these two items. So 5 times 3 is 15 qs. So 15 qs should be at the bottom. You can see that A is out, it has 8 qs, so it's not A. B is out. It's either, it's either C or D. So let's continue. Numbers, 5 into 15 is 3. 3 to 6 is 18. So you have 18 up here. So C is out. It has a 6 here. D has an 18. So question 32 shows that the answer is D. So it's 32 D, right? Okay. So question 32 is D. What? What we can do is just finish it off. Let's finish the question. Q into QS goes S time. S time P is SP or PS. Plus 3 into 15, 5. 5 for 20. That's for numbers in letters. S into Q and S. S would cancel S, so you have Q, and Q multiplies R here, all right? So you have 18 PS plus 20 Q R. It's a matter of adding two fractions. And you know, you apply the same principle when you're going to be adding those two fractions as you would do when you add numbers. All right. Let's look at question 33. Question 33. If 60 minus y is less than 20 what is a possible value of y well you could very well solve this 60 minus y is less than 20 if you subtract 60 from both sides you have negative y is less than 20 minus 60 so negative y is less than negative 40 and if you multiply both sides by a negative 1, you have positive y is greater than 40. You see that? You have to switch around the sign when you multiply an inequality by an, a negative 1. Now, this is saying y is greater than 40. So it would be 50. You could also substitute... If you're not sure about doing this part and you're not comfortable do, doing this way, doing it this way, what you could do substitute each answer in the inequality. 60 minus y. In this case, suppose y is 10. 60 minus 10 is what? 50. Is 50 less than 20? No. So a is out. What about 60 minus 30 for b? 60 minus 30 is 30. 30 less than 20? No, it doesn't work. What about 60 minus 40 for C? 60 minus 40 is 20. Is 20 less than 20? No. When you put 40 in it, you see that C doesn't work. 20 is not less than 20. But when you try 50 for D, 60 minus Y, which means 60 minus 50 now is 10. Is 10 less than 20? Yes, it is. So D is the answer. 
um, just look question uh, this is what question 33 D right you can see that it's D now let's look back a bit at this part where you multiply I'm saying that when you multiply an inequality by a negative number you're supposed to switch around the sign where it comes from is something like this suppose you have a temperature scale 0 1 2 3 4 5 degrees Celsius it's in a refrigerator negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 that's like in a freezer all right now if you say that 5 degrees Celsius is a higher temperature than 0 degrees no than say 2 this is 5 here this is 2 here 5 is hotter than 2 5 is higher than 2 so 5 is greater than 2 suppose you say down here that ah, you see what I'm talking about 5 is greater than 2 the higher the temperature right the hotter the object is now let's erase part of this and we look concentrate on what is down here alone suppose you look at this the fact is negative 2 degrees Celsius is a higher temperature than negative 5 you can see that right negative 5 is lower it's colder but then what happens when you go up here when you compare 2 and 5 2 here you can see that 2 is less than 5 2 degrees Celsius is less than 5 degrees Celsius so when they become positive you cannot what negative 2 uh, I had said negative 2 is greater I had put the inequality sign wrong let's look at it again negative 2 is greater than remember the bird oak meets beak to the bigger food all right so negative 2 here is a higher temperature it's greater than negative 5 you'll see that negative 2 is greater than negative 5 that's on the, on the negative side of the scale let's go up to the positive side of the scale 2 and 5 how do you compare them now positive 2 and positive 5 you notice that 2 is lower than 5 less than 5 so you look at this now you notice that the signs are switched around on the negative side negative 2 is a higher temperature is greater than negative 5 but up here on the positive side of the scale positive 2 is less than positive 5 so you see 2 remains on the left 2 remains and 5 remains on the right but when you switch around when you change the signs the when you change the negative to positive the signs switch around all right so that's what we're talking about all right when you go from negative 5 to negative 2 you go hotter you point this way negative 5 to negative 2 when you go 5 to 2 up here you point downward the arrow switches so the arrow switches switch now remember negative 2 times 1 is a positive 2 and negative 5 times I mean negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2 and negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5 so this is would be like multiplying by a negative 1 all right enough of that let's move on we're going to look at question 34 question 34 it says uh, the smallest of three consecutive positive integers is s is x the sum of these three integers is 57 oh did we look at the answer for the previous one 
let's make sure for Christian 33 Christian 33 D as we said was 50 so everything is all right with that all right so we continue with question 34 the smallest of three consecutive positive integers is x good the sum of the, these three integers is 57 which of the following equations express this information all right what did you get when you worked it out earlier let's see what it is well you would know by now because you would have done it um you would have done it and then click submit and saw the answers all right or see whether you got it right or wrong but quest question 34 the answer should be d let's look at it further and see why it would be d the smallest of three consecutive positive integers consecutive means one after the other for example consecutive positive integers would be like nine well it says the smallest nine ten eleven something like that now the smallest one is x whatever that is didn't give you a number what would be the next one in line let me if the smallest one is x the next bigger one will be what well you can see how do you move from 9 to 10 you add 1 so to go from here to here you say 9 plus 1 or do you move from 10 to 11 you add 1 you say 10 plus 1 so you keep adding 1 each time to go to the next positive integer so negative so you have x the next one is x plus 1 what would be the next well it's this plus 1 so it's x plus 1 plus 1 all right now this is the same as x plus 2 so you could rewrite it as x plus 2 the sum of the three is 57 so the sum of these you have x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 gives you 57 now it says x you have the x here then x plus 1 and x plus 2 equal 57 is d so you see question 34 d all right that's question 34 let's look at question 35 see what it's about all right let me just erase the rough work here the vector a b maps the point 3 comma 2 onto p prime is negative 1 5 then a b is all right a b maps 3 2 onto negative 1 5 generally what you would say about this is that you have the column vector a b plus the column vector 3 2 which is p and the, it maps onto negative 1 5 which is a column vector here all right now if you have this what you're really saying is that a plus 3 is equal to negative 1 at up top and down the bottom b plus 2 is equal to 5 so if a plus 3 is negative 1 what is a what you can do here is subtract 3 from both sides you have a plus 3 is equal to negative 1 you minus 3 minus 3 3 minus 3 you have a is equal to negative 4 so a would be negative 4 you can see c and d are out what about b 
b plus 2 is equal to 5. Which number do you add to 2 to give 5? It's 3. So b is equal to 3. So it would be a. It seems as if question 35 is a. So let's see. Question 35, a. You can see it here. All right. So question 35 is a. So you do question 35. All right. We break here and continue with question 36 next time.